right, Carolina. It was so great for you to meet with us. Absolutely. I'm excited. Thank you for having me. So the last time we spoke with you, you were at Anime Expo and you were about to preview it for everybody. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about that process of greening it at the conventions? It's been really fun because it's specifically the audience that would probably like it the most. People who yeah. love comics, people who are involved in cosplay and gaming. So for the most part, it's, I mean, I only got positive feedback. So that was nice because they just felt represented. And a lot of them had a very similar pandemic to the character. So it was a beautiful reception. And I'm glad that they could identify with different parts of the movie, you know? Oh, yeah. So uh, speaking of, did you have a favorite part of the movie? Like, is there anything that really like uh, resonated with you? Any scenes that, um, you know, kind of sparked something for, for your experience in the pandemic, let's say, or just uh, something that really resonated with you for Morgan's character? I mean, I feel like even though uh, I didn't write the story and it's not my personal story, I for sure I could connect a lot in that, you know, Morgan does Twitch live streaming and I have a following, so you know you you feel sometimes like this responsibility with your fan base to to always show a great face or to you know give them hope even though you've lost hope. So I feel like at some points in the pandemic it was lonely, but I would go online to let them know like, hey, it's okay, you know. And sometimes it's just like as soon as you turn off the camera, you're like, ah, there's a lot of output of energy on social media but then when you when you turn the camera off it can it can be a little lonely you know so right. I definitely understood that and also just you know scrolling through Instagram and feeling like some people are having a great time and you're not and of course it's just social media so you forget that it's not always real so I I felt like that was really important to show you know oh for sure one of my favorite parts is that Morgan at one point just grabs an apple off of her end table with her mouth just completely feral like because nobody's around I can do whatever I want yeah. um so you this was your first time producing correct yes I mean I I'd, I'd produced my little web series which is you know four seasons of me shooting sketch comedy with my iPhone but this it's is the Bang first Saxon on YouTube correct correct yeah okay um no this is the first time I, I produce a, a feature length so yeah oh yeah so is there anything that you learned about that experience that that you'd like to share maybe for next time, if you ever want to do, Ooh. to have a next time. <laughs> it's, I know it's, it's really a lot. hard. You know, you, you kind of learn as it goes and, and people might prep you, but you're going to, you're going to hit stumbling blocks along the way, like anything. Right. So I feel like make sure you have a great team that supports you and you can challenge your ideas or, or challenge their ideas and vice versa so that you're, you're creating hopefully the best possible product, but you want support, you know? So that when you're kind of losing faith and you're like, can we make this happen? So you know, going, yes, we can, because you need that, you know, but every, every step of the way I learned something different. So yes, I could do it again easier, but I think every project's going to have its new hurdles. And um, it's, I guess it's part of life, right? You keep learning as you, as you do more things. Right. I know you said that you didn't have the same experience during shutdown, like, you know, the same level of isolation. What was your lockdown like? Well, I, I was alone. Mornings. I was alone in my apartment, uh, and we actually shot in my apartment. So, oh. you know, it does it does feel very real. Um, yeah. <laughs> the first the first five or six months, I was alone in my apartment, and I, I would connect a lot with my sister on my two sisters on FaceTime, and then my parents were still in Colombia, so we were making sure to do you know Sunday family Zoom sessions to see how everybody was, and so you know just kind of living in a little screen, I definitely connect to a lot, and we were doing online signings for. Overwatch. So, you know, that whole thing of like, I'm on guys and here I am signing autographs and people are like, how are you staying alive? And it's like, I don't know, we're all trying to figure it out. So, you know, there are there are parallels, I guess, with Morgan in my life, even though it wasn't particularly or exactly like hers. But but, you know, even though we do sometimes compare ourselves to what is happening on social media, it, it's also a beautiful outlet to be able to share stuff or to get hope from other people to feel the positivity coming through. So I feel like you know, it's got, it's got both sides and that's why we have to find the balance with it. I know it's been a while since filming, but could you tell us who made all the wonderful costumes in the movie? Like, especially the Mercy one. Yeah. Mercy it was Melanie Jasmine. She's oh. an amazing cosplayer. Yeah, she's yeah. great. <laughs> she, she did my first, she's done all of my Sombra cosplays, but she was the, the one that first reached out to me and said, Hey, we should do this. So yeah. since then, I, you know, I think I did four with her and then I knew we were going to borrow all the cosplays just because, you know, financing. But 
for that one, we felt it had to be really special. And it ended up being even better because she was building it, you know, in, in Houston where she lives. And we flew her out for this. And she had to bring, you know, she always travels with all her equipment. So she had her sewing machine and glue guns and all the crazy stuff. And we ended up using those as props for Morgan. So it actually helped because we get to show part of the process of making the costume. But she was just stellar. She did also my makeup for what we call the Dark Knight. And it was just really nice to have her energy on set. And she's just so talented. But but the other stuff we borrowed because we didn't yeah. have we didn't have all the cosplays. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's great. There is quite a bit of masturbation in the movie did you find that you had any trepidation going into that or was it a very like comfortable set is there anything you'd like to speak to about it well I mean on set I felt comfortable we were a very tiny team and you know that that wasn't an issue I think it was just it was kind of trying to connect all the different things that people were talking about feeling in the pandemic so you know maybe not wanting to cook. So you're ordering pizza, but you're also eating yeah. ramen. And and this idea of like, just, you know, if somebody's not trying to make their meals, then it's just become super unhealthy eating, or you never clean your apartment or always being in sweatpants, like what everybody sort of in different ways uh, experienced in the pandemic, living on a screen. Um, I felt like that was part of it. Some people are just like, I'm lonely, and I don't know what to do. And it's become a little obsessive or unhealthy, or for some people, very healthy, you know, I we're not judging it. We're just showing that sometimes it, as you felt lonely, it's like, what, what else do I do to, to calm the, the brain just going crazy. So um, we wanted to show that as something that is natural and human. And also if, if it's done too much without sort of the heart or, or whatever makes you feel healthy, then, then it can turn towards the unhealthy side, like anything like gaming, like yeah. social media addiction, like all of this stuff, if, if it's taken to an extreme, then it becomes unhealthy. So that was kind of what we were trying to show. You said that your pandemic was sort of similar, oh, it, but not. It was, it was like, like yours, it was similar, but not the same um, level of isolation. But it's nice right. to be able to see the human side of things to know. So uh, what I was actually going to ask is where can we find Morgan's Mask now? Where is it streaming? Yeah. Uh, well, it's out today. Yay! Um, all my socials have the information. If anybody somehow doesn't copy it, like you can just go to any anything and any of my socials and you'll find it. It's on Amazon Prime Video, on Apple and iTunes, on YouTube Video and Vudu. So you'll find it everywhere. I think if you just Google Morgan's Mask, watch now, you'll hit it. But um, I, I've listed it all on my YouTube channel and stuff. So, Well, that's great. Did we? Is there anything else you'd like to get out there that we didn't cover? I just like to give trigger warnings for people, sure. especially a lot of the the gamers and cosplayers I've met have shared a lot of stories that can be very sad or triggering because of what they've lived. So, you know, we have something at the beginning that lets people know what, what different subjects is going to be touching. But for me, the most important thing is that we're trying to give hope to people who are feeling lost and sad and lonely. So it's not just going into a depressed, dark place for the sake of that. It's, it's showing how we all have felt something similar at different points in our lives and with help of loved ones and, you know, different, different tools for mental health, you can get out of it and, and slowly start rebuilding your life back again. So Morgan's life at the end doesn't end up being this like perfect bouquet of roses. It's like, okay, right. step by step, I'm, I'm doing this and I'm feeling better as I go along, you know? No, yeah, I think it does a great job of that. And what I really loved is that you was uh, the choice for mercy kind of uh, on purpose to be like a, a sort of a rebirth type of character Uh, well yeah the writer had always chosen mercy but we thought we were going to do another of her skins which was just a random one because we thought we could borrow it and it just perfectly turned out to be the sugar plum fairy i love fairies but also you know mercy's a healer so i think there there is there's double meaning or triple or quadruple meaning in a lot of different parts of the movie so we do like that she comes in as the doctor is in (laughs) yeah he's gonna help you know that's great. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely didn't feel like it was too much at the end. Oh, cool. Uh, my, well, the one thing I did want to mention is that you and I did a lockdown thing together. It was a bunch of cosplayers that came in and we were like passing the brush during yeah. the quarantine. Yeah. yeah, I was I was one of those cosplayers. It was great. <laughs> yeah, we were... So funny. There's so many. You just don't you can't keep track. No, they... for sure. Um, it was That's just so one cool. of those nice little lockdown things that I remember you being a part of. And that's yeah, how we were keeping alive, you know? Exactly. People. Those were the positive sides of, of it all, you know? 